Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Becoming Bankable podcast. I'm your host, Christian Shaw. With me today, I'm sitting with Corey Quinn. Uh, He helps agencies escape founder-led sales by becoming a vertical market specialist. He's also the host of his own podcast, Vertical Go to Market, and the author of Anyone, Not Everyone. That was published uh, just this this quarter in 2023. Um, He was the former CEO, CMO at Scorpion, uh, and he took the company from 20 to 150 million in six years. And today, I just want to jump, dive deep into your entrepreneurial journey. Tell the the listeners the the story of how you came to be, how you came to start your own business, how your journey has been. How how long has it been since you, you... broke away from scorpion so it's been about uh it's been about let's see uh one year and nine months so i guess that's 21 months <laughs> wow awesome. yeah yeah it's been great yeah let's start off with the origin story how did your business come to be when when exactly did you start it and how did you know it was the right time to start it like how did you know to take that jump so my current business um the, the business that i'm running now Yes. Yeah. The agency okay. yeah. Um, coaching business. Yeah. So my, that, that came out of, um, I have uh, over 25 years in professional experience, but then of that last 15 have been in agency, in the agency world. As you mentioned in the introduction, I was the chief marketing officer of an extremely fast growing digital marketing agency. Uh, we grew from 20 million to 150 million in very short period of time. We went from 100 employees to 1,000 employees in just six years. We, we transformed the business over and over again over those six years. And while that was an amazing experience, I was always, I've always been um, wanting to go back into the sort of the entrepreneurial uh, life to to be a business owner again. I'd I'd uh, I'd had a business. Out of college, it was a start, startup business back in the dot com days. My best friend and I, we we raised six million dollars to start a streaming media business, which was uh, an amazing adventure. Uh, and you know, it was um, I, I ended up going back in house to to, um, to to really focus on my career. I had a wife and a child coming, so I had to make a salary. But after all of this experience, the twenty five years, um, I felt like I was. I no longer wanted to wait. Uh, I'd always been sort of a more of a, a more of a conservative person. Don't want to uh, take a lot of career risks, especially with you know a wife and a family. I have obligations, financial obligations. But I was I built my career up, built up enough what they call career or what I call career capital. That's a word from Cal Newport, um, and uh, and I felt like I was I had enough of a foundation in my career that I could step out and. Um, really started effectively a, a coaching and consulting business. It's, it's evolving into a training and, and, uh, you know, training and coaching business over time. But, uh, I felt like it was at the point where I could truly lean into my entrepreneurial desires and, and, and needs. Maybe I'm not sure what you call it, but, uh, but, but without, without a lot of risk of being a pure startup without not a lot of direction, I was effectively, I'm doing now what I was doing in house as an employee, uh, for another company. So that was some of the background. Got it. So taking that corporate experience, being the chief mm. marketing officer, scaling it to over 20 million a year, yeah. I'm sorry, 150 million a year, mm-hmm. and taking that experience and helping companies with this exact, with this exact scaling strategy. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's evolved over time and, 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 uh, and it's not just based on my time with the Scorpion, but throughout my career, I started mm-hmm. combining everything that I've learned and I love working with founders who really want to kind of scale their business. And they saw the success of what we were able to achieve at Scorpion and, and, uh, and just in my career. And, and, and my passion now is helping them to grow by leveraging some of the things I learned over the years. Hmm. Well, love, love it. Love, I would love to dig into that. I would love to vertically scale yeah. deep, deep into that. And uh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm an agency owner myself. So mm. this is something mm. that's top of mind for me. I'm, I'm very sure. interested in um, from purely just from my, from my my own perspective. How does an agency or a SaaS company scale vertically in a scale, in a specific market? Isn't there like tons of opportunity that they're leaving behind by going yes. instead of instead yes. of wide? 
Yes. Um, I think it was Warren Buffett that said the, 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 the most successful people uh, in the world, I'm going to paraphrase this, are the ones who say no to almost everything. And the challenge with any business owner, myself included, uh, and I personally struggle with this, is um, cutting off what they call TAM or total addressable market by saying, I'm only going to work in this very specific narrow niche. And I think, you know, from a, from a sort of the life cycle of a business, of an agency, uh, I actually, I don't believe that su- nit- niching down or being super, super verticalized at the very beginning is necessarily the best thing to do. I actually think that it's better, especially in a service-based business like agency, uh, but uh, can can apply to SaaS as well, where um, you really want to do a little bit of everything to really understand where your true strengths are as an organization, from a, both from the, the things that you do as well as who you serve. And it's only after a couple years of having those experiences and collecting that data, are you really in a position to say, okay, I know for a fact, I've got data that supports my decision that, hey, we know that this set of services for this specific audience work really well. We like working with them. We're passionate about that vertical. It's at that point where you can make a high quality decision to say, okay, I no longer am gonna be taking business from everyone else. This is a market that we wanna become sort of the, 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 the specialized experts in. Hmm. How does one do that? <laughs> I'm I'm constantly struggling with focus and yeah. tiny object syndrome. There's so much going on, and there's I'm I'm a marketing guy. I can work with a dental company or you know a, a lender or whoever, and it's it's very hard to put those blinders on. And you said you you would recommend not to start off specific, but to start mm-hmm. broad and then start to hone in and that yeah. and hone in the focus. How do you know? Is it a dollar amount? Is it a, a passion? Like, what, what's your? Robert's I think like? it's it's much more visceral. Things start to break uh, because you're unable to um, manage all of the different types of clients that you that you have. I'll give you an example of my client, one of my clients uh, who I work with to solve this problem. He is uh, it's about a five year old agency. They're doing a several million dollars in business. He is part of Vistage and YPO, and he's a great networker. And so through these networks, he's been able to get um, a bunch of clients. And he has about, he manages clients across 17 different verticals. And the challenge is that every time he closes a new client that comes in through the Vistage network or somewhere like that, it's a business that they don't understand. They don't really know, understand that business. Maybe it's construction, maybe it's manufacturing, maybe it's healthcare, maybe it's attorney, right? They don't inherently know that business. So it requires the account management team to have to learn yet another business yeah. to apply the, the marketing best practices to. And so inherent in running that type of business, there is just a lot of switching costs. There's a lot of, everything has to be synchronous. You have to meet as a full team to be able to figure out like, how do you move this client forward? And that there's nothing bad about that except for when you get to a certain size it becomes unmanageable to do really great work okay and it's those those agency owners and those founders who are passionate about growing to be big like not everyone does some some agency owners want to be boutique they want to have their hands with every client they want to be a part of that that's fine but this is really for the agency owner who says I really want to scale to you know two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty million dollars. Uh, in order to do that, um, or one of the ways to do that is by becoming a vertical market specialist. And I'll give you an example of of how this played out in my life, if that's okay. Please, please sure. Go. Okay, so <laughs> in uh, in my fifteen years of experience, my first two agencies the sales were all founder led. The very first agency I worked for, I was in business development, and it was founded by a, uh, a guy who was a Harvard Business School uh, graduate. And so his network, the, all these HBS graduates who went on to be the CEO and the CMO of large retail brands like Lululemon and um, you know Hyundai and Remax and all these places. And so the way that the, biz- the agency grew is he worked his network. He got us this, you know, in the sales team, the leads, and we would you know, work the leads and close them. The next agency I worked at uh, was founded by the ex-CEO of MySpace. And so he too had a fantastic network and he would work his network and you know get us the leads and we'd close them. And so by the time I was about eight years into the agency life of, of uh, these two agencies, 
I began to believe that that's just how agencies work. You have a charismatic founder who works their network, gets the leads, and then you know they that's how they grow. It wasn't until I joined a company called Scorpion, which we've talked about, where I found something very different happen. What it would be is that the phone would ring, the salesperson would answer the phone, and they would close the deal on the very first call. The salesperson would hang up the the, uh, the phone, stand up, take a rubber mallet and hit a big metal gong, and it'd be fi- high fives all around the sales floor, right? The, 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 the thing that was different for Scorpion uh, when I first arrived was that they had, a, they had a vertical focus on attorneys. And it turned out that the attorneys didn't care who the founder of Scorpion is. They didn't know who it was. They didn't need to know them to, to buy from them. What the attorneys cared about is working with a vertical specialist who understood the agency, sorry, the, the attorney business who understood how to market specifically for attorneys and had a lot of evidence that they've been able to be successful in that, in that regard. Right. And through that helped me to open my eyes to the power of taking a vertical market approach that allows ultimately the founder to separate themselves from sale, from doing the, the sales process and really build more of a professional sales organization, allowing them to scale. But yeah, so the charismatic leader was was running the, you know, getting the sales opportunities, the business development opportunities, attracting new clientele and prospects uh, for the sales team to close. And then you switched over to Scorpion, which the, the leader wasn't su- out, super out there. They were just super ingrained in the, in the uh, attorney niche. Yeah. Well, so they happen to, in this specific situation, they happen to be very early in the, um, in the sort of the internet marketing space and the website space. And they had built up just, (laughs) the story is pretty funny, actually. Back in the day, they started in 2001, back in the day, a couple of guys opened up the yellow pages, started with the A's and started with attorneys, ended up like selling a bunch of attorneys websites. And then ended up being a, a thing. And by the time I got there, there was about a thousand clients, most of them attorneys that had SEO optimized websites. Well, it turns out that the way a non-Scorpion client would shop uh, an attorney was that they would go to Google and they would say personal injury attorney in Milwaukee or whatever market they're in. And they would see who's ranking of their competitors and, uh, you know, in the, in the search engines and they would go to that attorney's website. The bottom of the website was the Scorpion logo. The attorney would click on the Scorpion logo, go to the Scorpion site, call us. And the sales team would close the deal on the first call, right? And so that was the initial way, that was sort of the the, the, the marketing um, uh, system engine, thank yeah. you, that I inherited when I first got there. That's what, that was the starting point from the, from the growth. Um, what we ended up doing was a lot of, uh, from an inbound perspective, a lot of thought leadership around, specifically around personal injury attorneys. We would work with uh, personal injury attorney influencers we would join their associations. So there's specific associations that our attorneys that we wanted to attract, they were a member of. So we would just join those associations. We would provide them with content and all these great things. We'd go to their conferences. We would host amazing parties. We would send them gifts in the mail. We did a ton of stuff to be uh, to make sure that we were front of mind when it came to their marketing, that they knew who we were and that, that we were a, a, a true expert in that space. Got it. Super fascinating. Okay, so <laughs> I I want to build um, authority in yeah. in one in one niche. I want to build authority in in the home services space. Okay. In the past, I'm a seven year going on eight years agency owner. We've worked with all types of businesses, all industries. We're seeing the most success with um, uh, lending, uh, business lending, and home services. So the lending side of things, we became our own broker sh- broker, um, and we built that whole. Uh, company out, but I really want to go deep into uh, home services. And so, what would you, what would you recommend for a, a you know, a, a young, small, relatively small uh, agency wanting to break into the space that doesn't have much credibility or authority? Like we have some clients, sure. but not like, not like Scorpion, where we're, we're mm-hmm. the you know, top market leader and with attorneys. So, how would you like start the authority building process? So. One of the one of the things that um, you could think about 
is how you want to specialize specifically. There's two ways you can specialize. There's a lot of different ways you can specialize, but I kind of boil it down to two different areas. Have you ever heard of an etch a sketch? It's this little mm -hmm. red box where you have the little knobs, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine uh, there is a, uh, and if this is for listeners, it may be a little bit more difficult because I'm doing something with my hands, but I'm basically saying there is a uh, an X and Y axis, okay? And on the, uh, the X axis, the horizontal axis, there is, that is who you specialize. I'm sorry. That is what you specialize in doing on the one end of the spectrum is, uh, you do all digital for all people, right? You're very generalist. You're very much a generalist. That's on the one end on the far other end of the horizontal line is that you are a, you know, a specialist. You do this one specific thing. Let's say, and I, I'm not sure what, what specific services you do, but let's say you do TikTok videos. Okay. That would be something that and I, that doesn't seem like you do, but we'll use that as an example. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah not yet. Yeah, yeah it's say. coming. It's coming. <laughs> so you let's say you're an ultra specialist in this one service. This is the thing that you do, right? And so there's a gradient between being a pure generalist, you do anything digital, websites and you know, social media, whatever, on the one end of the spectrum, on the far other end of the spectrum is you are a, like a specialist in doing one thing. Well, the other, um, the other line, the, the, the vertical line, is not specializing in what you do, but who you do it for. So on the mm -hmm. one end of the market, let's say a generalist, you do business with anybody. Um, you do business with um, local businesses, national businesses, enterprise, SMB, anyone, anyone you can sell to. On the other end of the spectrum, you only sell to, let's say, um, plumbers or plumbers who do, um, you know, only uh, new construction. That would be the other extreme of who you serve. And so the etch -a -sketch a sketch comes in where, what's that? A niche within a niche, like a specific. Niche within a niche, like a specific, specific niche, right? You'd be very, very specialized in who you serve. Now, the etch -a sketch comes in where you want to play with across both of these, um, these, these sort of this matrix, um, how specialized do you want to be in who you serve and what you do, right? So tell me a little bit about what the specific service you provide. Like, what is the thing that you do? We help them get new revenue by reactivating their old leads that they haven't closed. So we basically okay. get them, yeah, all their missed opportunities, people that they've met online, uh, met at trade shows, people they got in contact with. They didn't close them for whatever reason. Life happened and they didn't close them. We help them get that revenue reactivated. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. I love that reactivated revenue. That's so, that's super cool. Um, very, I, I don't come across that very often. So I love that. And when I think about it, is this, would it be fair to say it's like CRM marketing? It's like picking their existing contacts and refreshing them and reactivating them, as you said. Through, through AI, through artificial intelligence, yeah. My goodness, that is so sexy. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty interesting. That's, that's fairly specialized, right? And so you provide a service where you're helping them to, to grow through through this reactivation, um, leveraging AI. Um, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Then, then, then now we're talking about who you do that for. So you're saying with home services, within home services, home services is a huge category. It's like a whole industry. Um, could you be more specific or do you want to be more specific within home services? We, we work with roofing, uh, windows, gutters, siding. Those are flooring companies. So those okay. are the current existing clients that we have, but this can work for any home service. Sure. So roofers, gutters, gutters, and siding, you said? And windows and flooring. Those are okay, the Okay, windows current. and flooring. Okay. We all, you know, everyone, including your prospective clients, want to want to... Um, work with, in this case, an agency who has, who's proven. They don't want to take a risk. They don't want to waste time and money on some fly by night situation. And so the more evidence you could provide a home service business that you are a true expert in providing the, the sort of the solutions that you're, that you're saying you could do through evidence, through proof points, the, the, the less friction in the buying process you have, right? It's all mm -hmm. very obvious stuff. So for instance, if you were the expert in helping roofing companies to reactivate their contacts yeah. um, and you had a lot of case studies and a lot of proof and you were a member of the National Roofing Association and you were embedded in that community, it would add a lot of credibility into um, into the work you're doing, right? And, and so um, the way you get there is you want to look at um, the total, what they call the total addressable market, which you're probably familiar with within roofing, how many businesses 
are there in the US that are likely to have the pain point that you solve and that can afford your services, right? That was just, those are the two main qualifiers. And it's really looking at um, you know, how many of those businesses exist and how many, how many could you potentially target and use that as the basis of making a decision. Do we just focus on roofers initially or do we do we spread ourselves across each of these four? It's a, it's a big question. I imagine it's not something that you come up with just like overnight. It's a process of refining it and looking at the data, reviewing and analyzing, seeing who's the best customers that you like working with and is also like the most profitable and right. making a decision based on based on that over time. And I think the reason why it, it is a it needs to be a considered decision because you're gonna be putting some effort behind it. You're gonna be building out marketing collateral that talks about your your roofing clients, you're going to be you know, filming testimonials. You may be joining the conf- the associations and going to the conferences. The, one of the ways for the a gut gut level check is what is the average revenue per client uh, times 3% of the total market. So let's say that there are 50,000 roofing companies that are relatively within your TAM. If you got 3% of the market, which is 1,500 of them, and you average the average revenue per client, if you do that math, and you look at how much revenue you'd be generating as an agency, does that meet your sort of your revenue goals, right? As a sort of a barometer. Do you take into effect emotions and feelings like the people that you're working with, the clients that you're, or do you look only at the numbers? Because these roofers, they're, they, <laughs> they're, they, they make a lot of money, but sometimes I don't like working with them, to be honest. You, it is so important. You, you, I think because through specialization, you're going to be working with these folks day in, day out. Uh, and um, they're really what I see the most successful agencies are those that have, they, they, they give a damn. Like they care about the people, they care about the industry, they see themselves as helping to improve the industry. Mm. And so uh, if it is a vertical that on the paper it looks really good, but that you don't really have a strong, um, emotional pull to want to help and be a part of every day, then it's probably not the right vertical for you. <laughs> Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do some more uh, <laughs> reflection with my therapist later. Of course. But, but yeah, I, um, I do want to jump into your book before we conclude the sure. episode for today. So the anyone, not everyone, what inspired you to create this? Where did this, this book come from? And could you give the listeners kind of like a brief overview of, of what it's all sure. about? Well, it is the work I do on a daily basis is one-on-one consulting with my clients. The book is effectively the same process that I take my sort of my high-end clients through, but it's now it's written down. And so it really makes it accessible to anyone, any agency who wants to become a vertical specialist. Maybe they've started as a journalist, they're serving a lot of people and they want to go through these these steps that um, that have codified over the years that are proven um, you know, proven out. And so it is really my way to extend the message and the sort of the frameworks that, that, that have worked really well for me and my clients to basically anyone who wants to buy the book for whatever it is, 20 bucks. So that's my, that's my focus on that. And, and what it is, it's the five steps that uh, will take you from a generalist to a vertical market specialist, including positioning, messaging, choosing your vertical, as well as activating a vertical specific go-to-market plan around inbound marketing, outbound marketing, and, and relationship-based marketing. Amazing. Where can <laughs> people purchase, like where, where can I find this? So it is not yet published. It's very, very close to being out. Um, so the best thing for folks to do, if you want to become a specialist, um, and you're interested in how to do that, I encourage you to join my newsletter. I have a daily newsletter where I send out a one minute tip, uh, five days a week where you will get access to some of my best thinking around becoming a deep specialist in your, uh, in your business. Awesome. And we'll link this all down below in the show notes and, uh, Thank you. check it out as well. Um, anywhere else that you'd like to to point people to or, or sure. share anything uh, for the audience before we go? Yeah, I think, um, you know, definitely my, my newsletter is my, my biggest thing. I, I encourage folks to sign up for that. Um, I have a, uh, I have something that's called a, uh, the six secrets to outbound ROI. Many agencies are sort of s- stuck in this founder led, uh, you know, situation. One way to, to break that is by going outbound, but there's ways to, few ways to do it well. There's a lot of ways to do it uh, very poorly and waste a lot of money. So I do have a, um, a six, uh, six day email course. It's a free email course, 
uh, that you could take. If this is of interest to you, you can do it. Uh, you can sign up for it right now. Get the very first secret by going to getoutboundroi.com. And again, it's completely free, no upsells, nothing like that. It is just a six day course. As I said, that you will learn my six secrets to uh, growing Scorpion, in my last business. We introduced Outbound um, to an inbound only agency. We grew it from 20 million to a 40 million uh, very quickly just by introducing Outbound. And these are some of the lessons that we learned uh, along the way. So that would be another great resource for your listeners. Man, I'm gonna check this out. <laughs> <Okay>. I appreciate <laughs> this for myself. Outbound is okay, definitely good. an area that we need. Yeah, we do all inbound right now. So yeah. for those of you know who, people are listening, if you're doing all inbound, like it's good, um, but it's it's never good to be reliant on only one one channel. So we're definitely looking to diversify into outbound as well. So hope to check it out. Beautiful. Let me know what you think. Yeah, we'll do. All right. Thank you, Corey. Corey Quinn. It's been a pleasure. Um, sure, and, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, I would love to continue the conversation and learn more. But well, thank yeah. you guys. All right. Yeah. Thanks.